I think of my father and my mother with minimal education. We were economically poor, but we were not culturally poor. The Carter family, Toronto, 1936. At this time, nobody in the family would have had an inkling that the eldest born, George Carter, would go on to become a Canadian trailblazer. He was the eldest and I was the youngest. Three generations helped to tell the story of their brother, father, and grandfather, who became the first Canadian-born black judge. He was the only at black... Trinity at that time. Yeah, you know, black um, person at Trinity at the time. At Absolutely. This time. There wasn't one brother in there. I got my degree and went on to Osgoode Hall. He articled at first with the only black lawyer in the city, and then he left him and he went to a Jewish lawyer to article with. And those were the only doors that were open to him. Honestly, just the most positive attitude despite many of the hardships he went through. If any of the Carter kids came home from school complaining about being disliked, it was not easy. But my, again, my father said, I didn't send you to school to like the teacher. I sent you to learn. Linda recalls being a young girl when her family moved to Etobicoke, but were not welcomed by all of the neighbors. People across the street who were also lawyers, dad was a lawyer at the time, they started a petition to keep the blacks, we weren't black then, we were Negro, but that was beside the point, to keep <laughs> the blacks out of the area. Don't internalize it because know who Don't you are. Don't give it power. Don't give it power. He, he had a hard time, but he was able to just rise above it. What do you remember about the day he became a judge? Oh, oh wow, I was home, it was amazing. We were so excited. And the like, sisters all Finally, came home. finally, yeah. finally it happens. 59 year old George Carter becomes the first Canadian born black judge in 1980. Anything I think of doing, I think of my grandfather, and it's like he just <laughs> went and did it. And his yeah, obstacles that he had to overcome during those days were so much bigger. They made us grow up being proud, being black. Now 80 years old, Doris Brooke is the youngest of 14 and the only surviving sibling of the first Canadian-born black judge, George Carter. And I said, Dad, they'll never employ anybody of color. He says, what are you talking about, you damn fool? But we were thrilled for him, especially when he was appointed judge. And uh, what he had to go through as a lawyer and uh, the hardships then, we showed him, didn't we? Over the decades when Carter practiced law, his family says he always had the community at heart. Different black families, if they're gonna buy a home or they had a contract to read, they go to see Laia Carter, mm -hmm. Laia Carter. But as is the case for most trailblazers, life is often filled with great challenges. Biggest lesson from him, you know what? They, they can't educate yourself. That breaks the cycle, that shifts perspectives of people around you, and you know, they can't uh, take what's away, it's take away what's yeah, in your mind. What... And those life lessons would prepare Carter's daughter, Linda, as she set out to become a trailblazer in her own right, as a fashion model and actress in the 1960s and 70s. When I was going to do a fashion show, they could only have one black person in it. When yes. I first went to Paris, was the first time I actually went to go into a restaurant and they closed the door in my face. It's like, what? No, 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 c'est fermé, c'est fermé, c'est pas fermé. And then other people, other white people will go in and they let them in. But you would only have so many parts that you were allowed to play. What is the legacy of this family? For me, um, the strength, the perseverance, the commitment to each generation getting better and better. If you're true to yourself, you can't be you know, a phony to others. Melanie Zettler, Global News.